सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स एंटाइटल्ड आर पास वन पेज नंबर सिक्सटी सेवन चैप्टर नंबर सेवन टाइटल अशोक द एम्प्रर हु गेव अप वॉर रोशंस रूपीज रोशन क्लच्ड the crisp notes that her grandfather had given her on her birthday while she badly wanted to buy a new cd she also wanted to just see and feel the brand new notes it was then that she noticed that all of them had a smiling face of gandhi ji printed on the right and a tiny set of lions on the left what were the lions there for she wondered a very big kingdom to an empire the lions that we see on our notes and coins have a long history they were carved in stone and placed on top of a massive stone pillar at sarnath about which you read in chapter 6 ashok was one of the greatest rulers known to history and on his instructions inscriptions were inscribed on pillars as well as on rock surfaces before we find out what was written in these inscriptions let us see why his kingdom was called an empire The empire that Ashok ruled was founded by his grandfather Chandragupt Maurya more than 2300 years ago Chandragupt was supported by a wise man named Chanakya or Kautilya Many of Chanakya's ideas were written down in a book called the Arthashastra dynasty when members of the same family become rulers one after another the family is often called a dynasty the mauryas were a dynasty with three important rulers chandragupta his son bindusar and bindusar's son ashok in the middle of this page a picture is shown with the title the lion capital page number 68 on this page map number 5 is shown it shows the mauryan empire showing the principal cities and some of the places where inscriptions were found The places where inscriptions of Ashoka have been found are marked with red dots. These were included within the empire. Name the countries where Ashokan inscriptions have been found. Which Indian states were outside the empire? the cities with red dot are kandhar lampak shehbaz gadhi mansehra kalsi topara bahapur delhi meerut lumbini rampurva loria araraj sarnath kaushambi ilahabad gujjar rupnath dholi jogar sanchi पुनगुरिया 
सन्नाति मस्की ब्रह्मगिरी येरागुडी सोपारा गिरनार द अदर सिटीज शोन इन द मैप आर तक्षशिला पाटलिपुत्र उज्जैन There were several cities in the empire marked with black dots on the map. These included the capital Pataliputra, Takshashila and Ujjain. Takshashila was a gateway to the northwest including Central Asia, while Ujjain lay on the route from north to south India. Merchants, officials and craftspersons probably lived in these cities in other areas there were villages of farmers and herders in some areas such as central india there were forests where people gathered forest produce and hunted animals for food people in different parts of the empire spoke different languages they probably ate different kinds of food and wore different kinds of clothes as well page number 69 how are empires different from kingdoms emperors need more resources than kings because empires are larger than kingdoms and need to be protected by big armies so also they need a larger number of officials who collect taxes ruling the empire as the empire was so large different parts were ruled differently the area around patliputra was under the direct control of the emperor this meant that officials were appointed to collect taxes from farmers herders craft persons and traders who lived in villages and towns in the area officials also punished those who disobeyed the ruler's orders many of these officials were given salaries messengers went to and fro and spies kept a watch on the officials and of course the emperor supervised them all with the help of members of the royal family and senior ministers there were other areas or provinces each of these was ruled from a provincial capital such as takshashila or ujjain although there was some amount of control from patliputra and royal princes were often sent as governors local customs and rules were probably followed besides there were vast areas between these centers here the mauryas tried to control roads and rivers which were important for transport and to collect whatever resources were available as tax and tribute for example the arthashastra tells us that the north west was important for blankets and south india for its gold and precious stones it is possible that these resources were collected as tribute page number 70 tribute unlike taxes which were collected on a regular basis tribute was collected as and when it was possible from people who gave a variety of things more or less willingly there were also the forested regions people living in these areas were more or less independent but may have been expected to provide elephants timber honey and wax to mauryan officials the emperor and the capital city megasthenes 
was an ambassador who was sent to the court of Chandragupta by the Greek ruler of West Asia named Seleucus Niketa. Megasthenes wrote an account about what he saw. Here is a part of his description. The occasions on which the emperor appears in public are celebrated with grand royal processions. He is carried in a golden palanquin. His guards ride elephants decorated with gold and silver. Some of the guards carry trees on which live birds, including a flock of trained parrots, circle about the head of the emperor. The king is normally surrounded by armed women. He is afraid that someone may try to kill him. He has special servants to taste the food before he eats. He never sleeps in the same bedroom for two nights. And about Patliputra, modern-day Patna, he wrote, This is a large and beautiful city. It is surrounded by a massive wall. It has 570 towers and 64 gates. The houses of two and three stories are built of wood and mud brick. The king's palace is also of wood and decorated with stone carvings. It is surrounded with gardens and enclosures for keeping birds. Why do you think the king had special servants to taste the food he ate? In what ways was Patliputra different from Mohanjodaro? Hint, see chapter number 3. Page number 71 Ashok, a unique ruler the most famous Mauryan ruler was Ashok. He was the first ruler who tried to take his message to the people through inscriptions. Most of Ashok's inscriptions were in Prakrit and were written in the Brahmi script. Ashok's War in Kaling Kaling is the ancient name of the coastal Orissa. See map number 5, page number 68. Ashok fought a war to conquer Kaling. However, he was so horrified when he saw the violence and bloodshed that he decided not to fight any more wars. He is the only king in the history of the world who gave up conquest after winning a war. Ashok's inscription describing the Kalinga War. This is what Ashok declared in one of his inscriptions. Eight years after becoming king, I conquered Kaling. About a lakh and a half people were captured and more than a lakh of people were killed. This filled me with sorrow. Why? Whenever an independent land is conquered, lakhs of people die and many are taken prisoner. Brahmins and monks also die. People who are kind to their relatives and friends, to their slaves and servants, die or lose their loved ones. That is why I am sad and have decided to observe Dham, and to teach others about it as well. I believe that winning people over through Dham is much better than conquering them through force. I am inscribing this message for the future so that my son and grandson after me should not think about war. Instead, they should try to think about how to spread Dhamma. 
how did the kalinga war bring about a change in ashok's attitude towards war dham is the prakrit word for the sanskrit term dharma page number 72 what was ashok's dham ashok's dham did not involve worship of a god or performance of a sacrifice he felt that just as a father tries to teach his children he had a duty to instruct his subjects he was also inspired by the teachings of the buddha chapter 6 there were a number of problems that troubled him people in the empire followed different religions and this sometimes led to conflict animals were sacrificed slaves and servants were ill treated besides there were quarrels in families and amongst neighbors ashok felt it was his duty to solve these problems so he appointed officials known as the dhamm mahamatta who went from place to place teaching people about dhamm besides ashok got his messages inscribed on rocks and pillars instructing his officials to read his message to those who could not read it themselves ashok also sent messengers to spread ideas about dhamm to other lands such as syria egypt greece and sri lanka try and identify these on map 6 pages 76 77 he built roads dug wells and built rest houses besides he arranged for medical treatment for both human beings and animals on this page a picture is shown this is the rampurva bull look at this finely polished stone sculpture this was part of a mauryan pillar found in rampurva bihar and has now been placed in rashtrapati bhavan it is an example of the skill of the sculptors of the time page number 73 ashok's messages to his subjects people perform a variety of rituals when they fall ill when their children get married when children are born or when they go on a journey these rituals are not useful if instead people observe other practices this would be more fruitful what are these other practices these are being gentle with slaves and servants respecting one's elders treating all creatures with compassion giving gifts to brahmins and monks it is both wrong to praise one's own religion or criticize another's each one should respect the other's religion if one praises one's own religion while criticizing another's one is actually doing greater harm to one's own religion therefore one should try to understand the main ideas of another's religion and respect it pandit jawahar lal nehru the first prime minister of india wrote his edicts or instructions still speak to us in a language we can understand and we can still learn much from them identify the parts of ashok's message that you think are relevant today in the bottom of this page a picture is shown this is the brahmi script most modern indian scripts have developed from the brahmi script over hundreds of years here you can see the letter a 
written in different scripts. Early Brahmi, Devanagari or Hindi, Bengali, Malayalam, Tamil. Page number 74. Elsewhere, somewhat before the time of the Mauryan Empire, about 2,400 years ago, emperors in China began building the Great Wall. It was meant to protect the northern frontier of the empire from pastoral people. Additions to the wall were made over a period of 2,000 years because the frontiers of the empire kept shifting. The wall is about 6,400 kilometers long and is made of stone and brick with a road along the top. Several thousand people worked to build the wall. There are watch towers all along at distances of about 100 to 200 meters. In what ways do you think Ashok's attitude towards neighboring people was different from that of the Chinese emperors? Imagine, you live in Kaling and your parents have suffered in the war. Messengers from Ashok have just arrived with the new ideas about Dhamma. Describe the dialogue between them and your parents. Let's recall. 1. Make a list of the occupations of the people who lived within the Mauryan Empire. 2. Complete the following sentences. A. Officials collected. Fill in the blank. From the area under the direct control of the ruler. B. Royal princess often went to the provinces as fill in the blank. Page number 75. C. The Mauryan rulers tried to control fill in the blank and fill in the blank, which were important for transport. D. People in forested regions provided the Mauryan officials with fill in the blank. 3. State, whether true or false. A. Ujjain was the gateway to the northwest. B. Chandragupta's ideas were written down in the Earth Shastra. C. Kaling was the ancient name of Bengal. D. Most Ashokan inscriptions are in the Brahmi script. Key words Empire Capital Province Dham Messenger Official Let's discuss. Number 4 what were the problems that Ashok wanted to solve by introducing Dhamma? 5. What were the means adopted by Ashok to spread the message of Dhamma? 6. Why do you think slaves and servants were ill-treated? Do you think the orders of the emperor would have improved their condition? Give reasons for your answer. Some important dates. Beginning of the Mauryan Empire. More than 2,300 years ago. Let's do. 7. Write a short paragraph explaining to Roshan why the lions are shown on our currency notes. List at least one other object on which you see them. 8. Suppose you had the power to inscribe your orders. What four commands would you like to issue? Page number 76 On this page, 
you can see map number 6. It shows important trade routes including the silk route. The routes shown with maroon colour are the routes which were under the control of Chinese rulers. The routes shown in green colour are the routes which were under the control of the Kushanas. Read chapter number 9. The routes marked with beige colour were important sea routes. The routes marked with red colour are the routes which were under the control of the rulers of Iran or Persia. The routes shown in lilac colour are the routes which were controlled by the Roman emperors. Page number 77 On this page, you can see another map. It shows Chinese, Indian, Iranian, Arab, Greek and Roman traders participated in these exchanges. The ports along the coast of South India were important centres for the export of pepper and other spices. Find Poduka in South India on the map. This was the Roman name for Arikamedu. Refer to chapter number 8. This map shown on page number 77 is based on the Times Atlas of World History. Page number 78 The Mauryan Empire collapsed about 2,200 years ago. In its place and elsewhere rose several new kingdoms. In the northwest and in parts of North India, kings known as the Indo-Greeks ruled for about 100 years. They were followed by a Central Asian people known as the Shakas, who set up kingdoms in the northwest, north and western India. Some of these kingdoms lasted for about 500 years till the Shakas were defeated by the Gupta kings. Chapter 10 The Shakas in turn were followed by the Kushanas about 2,000 years ago. You will learn more about the Kushanas in Chapter 9. On the left top of this page, a picture is shown. It's an Indo-Greek coin. In the right middle of this page, a picture is shown. It's a Kushana coin. In the north and in parts of central India, a general of the Mauryas named Pushyamitra Shung set up a kingdom. The Shungs were followed by another dynasty known as the Kanv and by rulers from other families till the establishment of the Gupta Empire about 1,700 years ago. The Shakas, who ruled over parts of western India, fought several battles with the Satvahanas, who ruled over western and parts of central India. The Satvahan kingdom, which was established about 2,100 years ago, lasted for about 400 years. Around 1,700 years ago, a new ruling family known as the Vakatakas became powerful in central and western India. In South India, the Cholas, Cheras and Pandyas ruled between 2,200 and 1,800 years ago and about 1,500 years ago, there were two large kingdoms, those of the Pallavas and the Chalukyas. There were several other kingdoms and kings as well. We know about them from their coins and inscriptions as well as from books. On the right bottom of this page, a picture is shown. It's a Saat Vahan coin. There were other changes that were taking place in which 
ordinary men and women played a major role. These included the spread of agriculture and the growth of new towns, craft production and trade. Traders explored land routes within the subcontinent and outside and sea routes to West Asia, East Africa and Southeast Asia. See map number 6 were also opened up and many new buildings were built including the earliest temples and stupas. Books were written and scientific discoveries were made. These developments took place simultaneously, that is, at the same time. Keep this in mind as you read the rest of the book. The chapter number 7 ends here. Narrator, Babla Kuchar, Producer, Vimlesh Chaudhary Presented by C.I.E.T. N.C.E.R.T. New Delhi, India